Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Thomas Tight. We're back over here with Josh Scorcher. And, well, it's that time. It's that time. It's that time. We got the top 10 Bethesda fails. If you guys remember my old channel, this was actually the very first video of Josh's I ever reacted to on the... You know? Well, at least for the channel, like I said. So, like I said, this is the very first one. I know I did the company fails in out of order, but, well, better late than ever, as they say. <laughs> so, yeah, here it is. Very first one, so why not? So it's going to be cool to see, you know, like stuff that I actually saw the first time, but now let's see how things are. Well, let's take a look back and see these fails, huh? Anyway, hope you guys enjoy, and let's check it out. Bethesda, how the mighty have fallen. What was once the gold yep. standard for open world action RPGs has become the laughing stock of fans and critics alike. Bethesda has been in the news a lot recently <laughs> as the poster child for laissez faire incompetence and blunders that's run by a shady snake oil salesman. Hey, Todd. Do you want to see something strange and mystical? No! Get out of here with that watch! Lay off the poor beavers, will you? Jeez. Lately, it seems that they just can't do anything without having it backfire in some shape or form, and then they end up making it worse. But that doesn't bother Oof. them because what? it just works. Yeah, they said the same thing about the purge. Picking just 10 fails to put on this yeah, list seems like an right. underperformance, but we can only do so much in one video. Mm -hmm. And I can't think of a better way to spend my time. Nintendo. <laughs> Nothing Pick comes to mind. Something about a new Bethesda game. I can't wait to tell all my friends about it. Hmm? Dang it! Got blacklisted! Good boy. Okay, okay, that's an unfair oversimplification. Around 2013, Kotaku, one of the most well known gaming blogs of all time, managed to get a hold of some yeah, leaked information about Fallout 4. Bethesda took it well. There's a leak in the boat! <laughs> If by well, you mean completely blacklisting Kotaku from early copies and access to any of their games. Now, to be fair, Bethesda does have a right to be angry that Kotaku leaked something they obviously wanted to keep a surprise. In fact, Kotaku is proud of leaking the stuff because they care about their yeah, readers like so I said, don't trust much. Kotaku a lot. On the other hand, blacklisting yeah, a news outlet for friends, years, especially not even telling them, is a bit of an overreaction. It makes the company look kind of sleazy. And the sketchiness didn't oh, stop kidding. there. Around 2016, right before Doom was coming out, Bethesda updated its policy for reviewers where they would send out review yeah. copies of their game the night before its release. According eh? to them, they love reviewers and want everyone to experience uh, their games at the huh. same time. Translation? Yeah. Now, mm -hmm. Doom turned out fantastic Eesh. in the end, thank goodness. But again, this policy makes them look really suspicious. Look, we can mm -hmm. debate about what's right and wrong until Eesh. we're blue in the face, How but reviewers and journalists, leads, the good huh? ones anyway, are there to uncover the truth. They take it upon mm -hmm. themselves to let consumers know if a no, game is really worth or the hype or if they'll just be wasting their money. If you deny See? them the chance to do their job, it's going to make you look like you got something scandalous to hide and hinder people's trust in you. And to be fair, it hasn't happened yet, which is why it's so low on the list. But given the recent decisions, can you really blame us for being a little... Nervous? Nervous? In this day and age of big budget AAA releases, games are becoming more and more ambitious, promising more and more features that will revolutionize gaming. And it's only to be expected that said features don't always make it into the games. Now, to be oh. fair, this isn't always intentional. Sometimes what you promised fair in the trailer ends up being something that you just can't implement. Many times, we gamers take the process of game development for granted. However, Todd Howard seems to drop honeyed lies oh more than Sean Murray. 
promising that Fallout 3 will have 200 fault, individual endings. Oblivion has radiant, unscripted NPCs. Skyrim will have infinite quests, unique handcrafted dungeons. Oof. Fallout Force engine is flawless and bug-free. The list goes on. Yeah. Of course, when the games actually this come out, the story is always the same. Straight. You lied to me. Ooh. Fair enough. Now, I probably the reason it's the so low on the list is that these days, people have wisened up to Bethesda's silver tongued type mm -hmm. and we're able to easily see through them. Sometimes. <laughs> Todd's charming smile and demeanor fooled a lot of people for Fallout 76. And hey, yep. give Bethesda some credit. Mm -hmm. They didn't use pure CGI and claim it was gameplay. In fall 2006, Bethesda announced they'd be working with Zombie Studios on a tactical first-person shooter based on the autobiography by real-life Navy SEAL Richard Barsink... Marchinko. Mar Richard Mar... Marcinko? Ah, the game was called Rogue Warriors Black Razor. Unfortunately, Bethesda huh. had to be Gotta that one brand kid who's on super one. picky with their food and completely dropped Zombie Studios, starting fresh by working with Rebellion Developments instead and shortened the title to oh Rogue Warriors. The game finally released in 2009 and... I call it bold and bright. More like belongs in the trash! Ah! Thank you, oh, boy, what a mess. For starters, if this was really based yeah. on Marcinko's life, which I really doubt, then his life must have been a Michael Bay movie. And of course, it wouldn't be your typical super awesome American hero game without our darling main protagonist swearing every 10 seconds. Seriously, we didn't swear this much in the Marine Corps, and I was there. You gotta be fucking kidding me. Bring the noise, bitch. Send me the bill, suckers. Drop dead, motherfucker, you fucking amateurs. Yeah, Dante, I'm sorry I made fun of you. Sorry. Fuck you. Yeah, sorry. And the icing on this cake of mediocrity, a broken combat hmm? system, glitches sprinkled everywhere, and some of the most boring oh gunplay of the genre. It's also incredibly short. It's also less of a birthday cake and more of a cupcake. You can beat it in two hours. But with how terrible the game is, that's probably a blessing. Critics tore this yeah, game a new one, as they should, and looking back, it's kind of funny. This broken, glitchy snooze fest was what Bethesda wanted. They could have kept Man. Zombie Studios on board yeah, and done it Zombie their Studios way. Version. It could have actually been better. But hey, they got what they wanted, and now they gotta live with it. Makes you wonder, though, what was so bad about the original game that this was preferable? Yeah, the fuck? What happened with Zombie Games? Like, I gotta learn no more about that story. Like, seriously. Do they screw up more? But, yeesh. I don't know. I think, I, I don't know. I think that's just something we'll probably never get the details of. Actually, have the details ever come out of that situation? I don't think it has. I know it's 2023, but still, I don't think, has anyone ever talked about like what happened between Bethesda and zombie games? Love to know. Yeesh, or Machinko. I feel bad for the poor guy. <laughs> anyway, moving on. The year was 2017. The event was E3. The company was Bethesda. So this is how it all here? went so very wrong. Bethesda Land, for those who have never heard of it, Bethesda not that I blame you, was Bethesda's gimmick for E3 2017. They promised it would be uh, an out-of-this-world experience with attractions connected to all their properties. As seems to be a running theme, we were disappointed. Yeah. I give you... Bethesda Ooh. Land. Yeah! Yep. Again. Poisonments left and right. It just works. Bethesda Land was more basic than your average county fair, boasting only a few stalls for food and entertainment and a single small Ferris wheel. Possibly really? even it? worse, the whole thing was hosted outside in Southern California in June. Ooh. To add on to the sweltering Ooh. wait times and lines, the spot they rented out was far too small, so people were packed like a bunch of sardines. The worst yeah. offense? For all the hype Bethesda Land cool. tried to generate, the only real announcements were for re-releases. They could have just had a regular, uh, simple E3 presentation, but instead, them. they put all this extra effort into disguising the fact they had a lackluster year. I never heard anyone claim Bethesda always makes sense. Back 
the yesteryear of gaming when games wanted to add new content, developers would make expansion packs, and unlike microtransactions or other ways you pay for new content, these added significant changes to the pre-existing game. Bethesda's put out some very good ones, such as the Shivering Isles. Then, in April 2006, Bethesda decided to try something new for their then-popular title, Oblivion an add-on that cost significantly less than a full-on expansion and had just about as much content as well. For the bomb price of $5, horse armor. Oof. Sheep. Hey, Firebrand. This is both uncomfortable and gaudy. Also, it pinches yeah. in places. Oh, eyes. Oh. Wait, no, 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 no! <laughs> Fans and that? critics alike lamb bastard Bethesda for this joke of a game add-on. While I'm Bethesda would go on armor. to release two Just normal ouch. expansions for Oblivion later, which were really good, they would also release seven other small add-ons that included a bit more content than just a single cosmetic. See? However, the damage was done, and people still make the horse armor joke as an example of what bad DLC can look like. But with the mm -hmm. way the market has gone with microtransactions, loot boxes, and cosmetics, maybe it's Bethesda who got the last laugh. And that leads us to... You know what I love about PC gaming? The modding community! Good job, good job, good job. And I want to encourage our audience to financially support mod development. By giving me a cut of all the money. are known for one thing, it would be how massive of a modding community their titles have. Fans have done everything from retexturing outdated assets to making entire new games. When Valve and Bethesda announced they would be expanding Steam's workshop functions allowing you to pay for some mods, it backfired. Horribly. Yeah. After an immense public Oof. backlash, I mean, Valve canceled the whole free, project and swept it under the rug to be forgotten. However, Bethesda learned absolutely nothing, as a few years later yes. they would release the Creation Club, a neat way for you to get new fan-made content for their games at a price. Bethesda themselves Again, insist why? that you aren't paying for mods, even though the content is made by modders, and mm -hmm. modifies the game, and okay, how stupid do you think we are? A majority of the items yeah, released are really just cosmetic companies. Think we're all and a lot of them are bad. There's a lot of videos on YouTube which showcases the Creation Club paid mods versus what modders themselves have made, and it's actually yeah. embarrassingly stuff. hilariously versus bad. Free. Look, I get it. You'll want to give back to your passionate communities. That's fine. But how can a team of professionals make a worse product than a few people with drive and a computer? And unfortunately, that isn't the only woe that the modding community has with Bethesda. Uh, get into that later, which... Honestly, I'm surprised it didn't take like a cue from like YouTube here. I'm sure it's not always great, but at least here we don't pay wall people. You know, we do it by, I mean, mostly it's by either views, view time, or I mean, with Creation Club, they could have just done it by, you know, amount downloaded or how many people use it. You know, I don't know. I'm just saying could have just done it based off of that, you know? Like, make a great mod that, you know, increases the game. Just see what happens, you know? Just saying, take a page out of YouTube, it worked, you know? You encourage people to make more mods since they're actually making money off it. And without paying while your customers. Which, again, we'll probably see more of later on. Like I said, I'll recover in a historian's videos, but moving on. Modifications, or mods for short, are some of the greatest things happening in gaming. They allow you to re-experience your favorite games in all kinds of new and interesting ways. And Bethesda's modding tools have provided prospective developers the ability to create all kinds of new content. Heck, some of the greatest games out right now are just mods. The problem mm -hmm. is that Bethesda seems content to let modders take care of the issues they themselves caused in their games. You know, it's a bad sign when unofficial patches that fix bugs are some of the most downloaded mods. Yeah. I mean, it's not like Bethesda has the time or resources to fix it themselves or anything. Dude, we have technology. Not to mention, anytime Bethesda tries to take something that modders did and implement it themselves, 
They don't do it very well. Bethesda's no. it just works mentality seems to be paying off though, as they're content to just I sit mean, back and let the fans fix the problems them, for them. Still, of course, Bethesda wouldn't have to rely on reason, their passionate no? modders so much if their design wasn't so faulty. Which leads mm -hmm. us to... Yeah. Oof. That happened. Mm -hmm. Bethesda let that happen. While yep. the creation engine may have been reliable before, Bethesda likes to pull a telltale gains by refusing to update the engine, which results in some consistently terrible graphics and <sighs> persistent glitches. Some of them are harmless and silly, to the point where Bethesda believes, not unfoundedly, that patching them would be detrimental. Most are not. One of the most infamous cases was the Glitch of Doom from Elder Scrolls Oblivion, where after a certain amount of hours playing, the animation would start slowing down and the game just became unplayable. Another case wow. was the Fallout 3 expansion, The Pit, for the Xbox 360, where all we got was an empty, corrupted space full of big Metal Gear Solid references. Yeah. How does they put up with those things? I don't know. bad enough. It seems like Bethesda is cursed when they go to launch a new game, as almost every launch they've released is met with horrendous design flaws. Skyrim and Fallout 3 on the PS3, for example, would agonizingly lag because it never stopped saving. And the longer you explore, the bigger the save file. And the bigger the save file, the worse the lag. And the worse the lag, the more you want to toss yeah. your PS3 out the window. Oh, I have the giant I just can't stand it! Okay, I'll yeah, give them credit. You, some of these Ugh. glitches they were able to fix. Emphasis on some, but it some, saved them yeah. and us a whole lot of grief if they just fixed their creation engine or beta tested longer. Now, to be fair, it's not like they did this on just purpose. It's not like they ruined the graphics of a game that even they didn't believe in. Are you sure about that? Uh, Mr. Howard, a moment of your time. Yes, yes um, mm -hmm. we have mm -hmm. an upcoming title for a beloved franchise, and it appears that we've implemented a few... changes. What do you mean? We're taking what's a great RPG series and taking on all the RPG elements. We're also adding Always Online to an admittedly already unstable game. We're also retconning 20 years of lore and adding in multiple microtransactions that are also pay to win! Right, Mr. Howard, I don't even think the games could be ready to launch! How am I supposed to market this? Constraints. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. We're dead. Even if you don't Friday. follow gaming news that often, I get to find someone who hasn't hey, heard of the dumpster <laughs> fire that was Fallout 76. Many, and I do mean many people, have talked about what an absolute disaster this game is. So let's go over the highlight reel of Failure. An RPG game with absolutely no NPCs to roleplay off of, leave the world What's barren the and lifeless. Turning an offline single player game into an always online multiplayer with no changes to the game engine, which broke many of the game's functions. Ooh. Graphical updates that were rushed or unfinished, making the game look like complete garbage. Ugh. When completing quests or exploring in the game, the rewards for doing so were usually junk, and most times that's literal. Oh, yeah. Not cool, man. It does look like shit. But the king of all the screw-ups at this game would be Bethesda themselves knowing the game was terrible and needed more work and still releasing it nonetheless. The game's already been delayed twice, they said. It's a big open world. No one's gonna notice a few glitches. Oh, Bethesda. They then went on for months saying, nothing's wrong, everything's working as intended, the game isn't broken, uh -huh. you just don't appreciate what you have. <laughs> Dude, we're not lying. This is not... Everything is fine, nothing is ruined. Fallout 76 crashed hard <sighs> after launch, with sale prices dropping down to $30 in less than two weeks. Heck, in Germany, they started giving away copies with the purchase of a new console. It became the game that everyone was talking about, but nobody but no wanted. One wanted to play. And there is a silver lining to this whole mess, is that we got to see some hilarious videos by fellow I YouTubers know. showcasing the absolute worst this game had to offer. Nuclear Winter's pretty great, though. Yeah. We are Yeah. 
just a slap in the face to your franchise at this point. Little eyes, stunning shows, people buy money for love. What could possibly be worse than Fallout 76, you ask? How about cheating developers out of money they earned? Obsidian oh. are the developers Hi, of Fallout New Vegas, believed by many fans to be the best of the series. So hmm. why didn't they receive pay bonuses? Well, you wouldn't think that because okay. the team didn't receive pay bonuses because the game didn't score high enough on Metacritic. Way to reward them Are for pushing me? out a full-length game in a year and a half, Bethesda. The developers even begged outlets for high review scores. And adding to that, there are wow. rumors that Bethesda paid people to give New Vegas negative reviews. Okay, now I implore you to that take that with a grain of salt because sometimes. those are just rumors. Mm -hmm. This next part, however, was confirmed mm -hmm. to have happened. Oh, Back in the whatever. 90s, Bethesda offered to publish Echelon, a new game by the fledgling Ooh. studio Madia. Then, they pocketed all the money that they owed to Madia. And it gets wow. even worse when you learn how poor the financial state of Madia was at the time. While it's Jeez. not as flashy or blatant as the other fails on this list, the reason it's number one is that this isn't laziness or clumsiness or stupidity. Nope. It's completely intentional. I believe this Greedy. is where Bethesda crossed the line, going from incompetent to straight up the malicious. Evil. I'm the Fiery Joker, and man, seeing Bethesda fall off their pedestal, it's making me really depressed. Coming is always usually a little with this. Weird this urge to brood about it and huh? be Wait, why am I doing this pose? pretentious in my wording. Oh, oh no, that's no. not square. God. Yep. The company is going through an emo phase in their games nowadays. Square Enix. Oh boy. I can't remember if I did this first or I went back to uh to the original other countdown list. Been a while since I seen these, so I'm not sure if I did that or not. Like I said, don't at me because I don't remember, to be honest. <laughs> anyway, so we'll be covering Square Enix next. So hope you guys enjoyed that one. That was a fun trip down memory lane. Anyway, until next time, like subscribe for more. I'll see you guys around. Adios.